right, y'all, let's go ahead and make my famous chili. So easy, y'all, but it's so good. So what you're gonna need is some ground meat. So I choose ground chuck, but I have used ground beef in the past. You're gonna need some chopped onions. This is a half an onion. You're gonna need one whole bell pepper, some grape jelly, pepper, some seasoning salt. I choose the Creole. Onion powder, garlic powder, this two alarm chili kit. It's the best kit ever. You're gonna need either spicy hot V8 or the original, or you can mix both. I like to mix both. You're gonna need some chili beans and some diced tomatoes. That is literally all I do for my chili. And y'all, it's so flavorful and it's so good. So let's go. All right, started. first things first, we're gonna take our ground chuck. And we're going to toss that in the pan like that. And what we're going to do is just break it up a little bit. It's already broken up to some good pieces. This is not taco meat, so you don't want it to be like chopped into like really small pieces like taco. You want to have fairly big chunks in it. Not too big, but big enough. So that's why I like using ground chuck because it's perfect for chili. So I'm just breaking it up to the size that I feel it should be. Making sure other pieces are spread apart. I have my heat on medium high. And now that I have the meat broken up to my liking, I'm going to go ahead and let it brown just about halfway through and then we're going to add our seasonings. Okay, so our meat is about halfway done. As you can see, it does have a lot of liquid in it. So this is where i want to stop and tell you guys to be mindful of when you season your food so i'm about to season the food just because i want it to cook in some flavor however i'm going to re-season it as well once i drain it so i don't add a ton of seasoning in the beginning i just don't do that i just add just enough because once i drain it i'm going to re-add some seasoning because you're not going to taste it all the way so I'm just adding in all of my seasonings that I use. The first one was garlic powder. I just added some onion powder. I'm adding in some pepper. And then I'm going to add in my Creole seasoning. And I'm just gonna stir that up because remember I didn't add in that much. I'm just adding it in now because I wanted to cook in some flavor, but once you drain it, some of that flavor is going to come off, which is why we add it. We go ahead and re-season it afterwards. So we're going to go ahead and just keep going. It's almost done. And then I'm going to take it off the stove and drain it. All right, so I have drained my meat. And as mentioned before, I'm just going to go ahead and re-season it. So I'm just adding in my Creole seasoning. Adding in my pepper. My garlic powder and my onion powder. I'm just going to give that a toss. All right, so we have everything coated. I'm going to go ahead and let that rest and we're going to start working on sauteing our vegetables. So let's go ahead and head over to the stove. All right, so we are at the stove now. I have my pot lightly greased with some olive oil. And we're going to take our bell pepper, toss that in, making sure we're getting all of it out. There we go. We're going to also add in our onion. And I'm going to just saute this for about three minutes. I want it to get a little bit soft before I add in my meat and my seasoning. Okay, so we have our vegetables sauteing. They're not tender, but they're not 
at its um, raw texture. And that's why I want it because my chili is going to cook for two hours. So it's going to get softer. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in our seasoned meat. I'm going to incorporate that. And now, since our meat has been incorporated, we're going to add our chili beans. I use the Bush's kidney chili beans, and I use the juice that's inside as well. So I just pour the whole can in here. If you like a lot of beans, use two cans. If you don't, either don't use any beans or use one can. I like it like this with one can. So I'm gonna leave that just like that. Now, I'm going to take my diced tomatoes I'm using the roasted garlic kind and I'm going to use the juice as well. So let's just go ahead and pour that in there. So good. And we're going to give this a stir. And some people will use a can of Rotel instead of diced tomatoes i do use that as well but this time i kind of wanted some more chunkier vegetables i wanted this to be a chunky chili so that's the reason why i used the diced tomatoes this time all right so we're gonna let this saute for about three minutes and then we're gonna come back and add some more stuff okay so now we're gonna go ahead and start adding our seasoning to the chili so remember guys, I showed you, let me let you see. This is the chili mix I use. And the reason why I use it is because it comes with, I'm gonna show you. It comes with the chili pepper, individually packed. The cumin, individually packed. Paprika. Minced onions and garlic masa flour that's to thicken your chili and if you like spice red pepper that comes in this box guys use it make it easy for yourself so the first thing i'm going to add is the onion and minced garlic mixture because we like that over here adding in the whole pack if you have two pounds of meat, add in the whole pack. If you don't have two pounds of meat, then you're just gonna add in one because most likely you only have a half a pound. Now, I would be honest with you. I don't really like cumin or oregano, but I like it in chili. So this has both in it. It has cumin and oregano. So I'm only gonna use half of it, but if you like that, use the whole thing. I'm going to use all of the paprika because I like that. I'm going to use all of the red pepper because I like that as well. I love spicy chili. I like anything spicy. If it's not spicy, I'm always adding jalapenos on top for some reason. And then I'm going to add in this packet of chili pepper. Now, I don't really have the entire two pounds, I'll be honest, of meat. So I'm not going to add in this whole thing. I'm only going to add in half of it. Plus, I've already put my own flavorings in it, which is why I don't feel the need to add in the whole thing. So now I'm just going in here, mixing it. And you're going to start to see that chili color come. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking like, girl, you said you was going to cook that chili for two hours. It don't have enough liquid. Isn't it going to burn? No. 
because we're gonna add some liquid to it. See, it's not done guys, I'm not done. All right, so this is where I see the thickness of my chili. If you like it like that, you actually can eat it like that right now because everything in there is fully cooked. But I like for my flavors to marinate. So I am gonna start off using my V8 juice right here. I haven't added water, guys. I've only been adding the juice from the cans and now I'm adding V8 juice. I'm telling you, leave that water out of your chili. It'll taste much better. So I'm just stirring that up, seeing what we got so far. All right, I can tell I'm gonna need my second V8 juice. Now I got the spicy hot one. This is why I tell you guys, either mix them or buy one or the other. So I'm just pouring that in there. If you don't want to use V8 juice, the other option is to add two cups of water. It'll be fine. It just won't have the same flavor. But it will be fine, I promise. Alright. So, it's to the consistency I like. So, I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to cover it. I'm going to let it simmer for about two hours on low. Once I come back, if it's not to the consistency I want as far as thickness, that's when this masa flour comes in handy because it'll make your chili thicker. It's something similar to cornstarch, but it's not cornstarch. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cover this and I will see you guys in two hours to show you what we're looking like. All right, our chili has been going for about two hours and this is the consistency. Now, I must admit, I want it to be a little bit thicker. But before we add in the masa flour, I'm going to add in the secret ingredient, which is grape jelly. That's right. You heard it. Grape jelly. And what grape jelly does for chili is it brings out all of the flavors and it adds that little hint of sweetness. Now, it's not going to taste like jellies in it. It's not going to taste like a lot of sugars in it. None of that. It actually brings out the flavor and it makes it a little bit more sweeter. So, I'm going to add a tablespoon. And I'm going to add one more tablespoon. So, two tablespoons to be exact. I'm going to let that dissolve in the chili. I promise, guys, you will not taste the jelly. The jelly just brings out the flavor. When I first um, tried this, I was like, oh, are you going to try it? Are you going to taste the jelly in it? No, you do not taste the jelly in it. It's just going to bring out the flavor and, this, and, a, and a little bit of sweetness. Um, if you're one of them people that add sugar to your macaroni, it's the same process basically. Um, because the macaroni kind of balances, I mean the sugar kind of balances out the cheese that's in the macaroni. Um, so that's just a little tip of mine. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in the masa flour. And I'm not gonna add in the entire pack because you don't want it to be too thick. I'm just adding in about a fourth of the pack. And I'm just going to stir that in because once chili cools down, it does thicken right now. It's literally hot. Um, I just turned off the stove. So it's not to a um, temperature to where you can actually eat it right now. You, you will probably want to let it cool off. And once it cools off, like I said, it gets a lot thicker. So that's why I'm allowing it to cool off. So I will be back once we go ahead and have this cooled and plate it and you will see the end results so see you back soon all right guys so i have plated my chili i just added some shredded cheese some sour cream and some scallions and i am ready to eat so bon appetit if you tried this recipe like comment and subscribe and let's get it